Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again, and I want to welcome everybody back to another video. And today, uh, wrapping up this paid request, this is from Jesse. Uh, this is the other movie that he wanted me to take a look at, the other movie that he wanted me to review. Excuse me. And it is I Love Trouble with Nick Nolte and Julia Roberts, which I have never seen this movie before. But I did like it. But I think this is one of those movies where it came out, made a little bit of money. It didn't explode at the box office, but it did make a little bit of a profit. And then it just kind of disappeared, but I think it's more known for the the two co-stars not getting along. That's kind of what people remember this movie for, not the movie itself. <laughs> but I did like the movie. I can't complain about the film. Um, it is an interesting movie, you know, more of a... I mean, it's kind of hard to put this one in a category because it's got the romantic stuff in it. It's got a little bit of comedy, a little bit of a thriller, a little bit of action. It's kind of a hodgepodge of, of different ideas. So, I don't know what category this would fall under, but I did like this movie. I can't complain. Uh, but before we get into that, as always, or this, or whatever, this, that, every other thing, uh, if anyone else would like to send in a paid request, you may do so down below in the description box. There's a link to my PayPal account. No amount is too big. No amount is too small. Just think before you send it in, and please, please, please... Send it as family and friends. There are still people that are sending it in as goods and services. We might have to change some of the rules here soon. Because y'all ain't listening. It's not hard. Please send it in as family and friends. If you send it in as goods and services, PayPal takes a cut. So if you send a dollar, I get like 90 cents. It kind of defeats the purpose, does it not? But anyway, please send it in as family and friends. It does not have to be just a movie review. It could be a TV series, uh, cartoon, comic book, a video game, uh, music, random thoughts, rant streams, commentaries, and anything in between. That's what the paid request is set up for. So again, if anybody is interested, go ahead, send it in, and I'll get to it as soon as I possibly can. For those of you that have sent them in before, thank you. I greatly appreciate it. It means you guys actually care about what I say and do here on this channel. You want to see me try some different things. It does motivate me to keep wanting to make videos so it's a win-win for everybody. You guys get more of the type of videos that you would like to see me cover here on the channel. I keep making them and at the end of the day, everybody goes home happy, just like they used to say at Blockbuster. So thank you. But I love trouble. I do not actually, but I like this movie. <laughs> Like I said, I think this is one of those movies, like so many other films, it came out, it made a little bit of money, uh, you know, did not get good reviews at all. In fact, when this came out, it was on a lot of the worst of the year list, which I thought was odd because I didn't think about, I, I didn't even think that this movie would remotely be in, in any worst category. That's just how I see it. But this is a film that just came and went, made a little bit of money. I'm sure the video did well, and then that was it. Nobody ever talked about it after that. But I think it is more known because Julia Roberts and Nick Nolte did not get along. Julia Roberts, at the time, was really big, was really popular, because uh, Pretty Woman had come out a couple years prior. That's the movie that kind of made her into a superstar. Hook was after that. Um, she was in a lot of big movies at the time. Sleeping with the Enemy. Uh, I think something to talk about was uh, the year after this. Uh, Mary Riley, which, where she played, it was kind of like a horror movie, Frankenstein type of movie with a woman in it. Um, Dying Young, I think, was a year or two before this. The Pelican Brief, I think, was the year before this. So... All these 
big movies were coming out. She was at the time a, a huge star. She was bankable. She was, you know, the it girl. And I like Julia Roberts as an actress. Don't get me wrong. And back in the day, she was fucking gorgeous. Um, I don't think anybody would doubt that. She was definitely beautiful back in the day. But she was very difficult to work with. I don't know about now. I don't know if she mellowed out or or she calmed down or what have you. But uh, she was very difficult to work with back in the day. Uh, When they did Hook, they called her Tinker Hell because it was always a problem. Her and Steven Spielberg did not get along, which I think they did end up working together again. I don't know why, though. Um, I think when they did Pretty Woman, I think her and Richard Gere did not get along because he's very difficult to work with as well. But I guess they patched it up for Runaway Bride, which I've never seen that. Um... But she was very difficult to work with back then. So was Nick Nolte. Nick Nolte was difficult, especially when he was drinking. I think at the time he was still drinking quite a bit. And he later disowned the movie. He said that the movie was awful. The movie was terrible. He said he he sold his soul. He only did it for the money because I guess they paid him a lot of money. Which would make sense because a couple years... Prior to this, he was in The Prince of Tides, which was a huge movie, and that got all this critical attention and awards and everything. Cape Fear, I think, was the movie that he did after that. That was a big hit. That was a big deal. So they were just throwing money at him. Same with Julia Roberts. So you have two actors, two at the time, two stars, two big names that were very... Very, very hot at the time because they had just come off of all these big movies and these movies were making a lot of money. So, you know, every everybody had an ego, I guess. And don't get me wrong, again, I like Julia Roberts as an actress. I always have. I just don't like her personally because, of, again, she was very difficult to work with. I hear she's not very nice. And she's a left, uh, left-leaning left uh Stinking, stinking pinko. So there's that. There you go. Nick Nolte always liked Nick Nolte as an actor. But yes, at at times, at this time, at other times in his career, he was very difficult to work with, especially when he was drinking. So there you go. But that's what everybody remembers this movie for. They remember it because the two stars didn't get along and they were both very vocal about that. Uh, Julia Roberts said that Nick Nolte was the worst actor she ever worked with, that he was disgusting and everything, and Nick Nolte said the same thing. So I think a lot of the times in the movie, they're not acting, they're just being honest. Um, You know, they did not like each other for whatever reasons, I don't know. It's just, you had two people that were at the top of their game, at the peaks of their careers. They were making a lot of money, and they let it get to them. So there you go. But that's the only thing that people talk about this film. They don't remember a single thing about it other than that. Which is weird, because I do think that they have good chemistry. I do think that they work well together, even... In the scenes when they're supposed to hate each other, again, a lot of that I don't think was acting, but it worked. I think it made for a good film. So, you know, it did help the movie, at least in my opinion. But again, the only thing that people remember about this movie is that they hated each other's guts. They probably still do, but oh well. But the plot of the film, and again, I don't really know how to categorize it because it goes in different directions. But Nick Nolte and Julia Roberts are two Chicago newspaper reporters. Nick Nolte is lazy. He, he's more interested in writing books. He just wrote a book that came out. All he cares about that. He doesn't want to report anymore. Julia Roberts is this young upstart. She's trying to get ahead. And they both are assigned to this uh, case where a train derailed. They don't know how, they don't know why, they don't know what's going on. They start to investigate on their own and then they end up having to work together because they each have pieces of the puzzle. 
So they have to work together to find out what's going on. Then the movie kind of goes into a different direction where there's this chemical company. They're experimenting with milk. This guy had it. He died and then he gave it to his son and then he had it. And then all these different things happen and these hitmen try to kill everybody, including Julia Roberts and Nick Nolte because they know too much. You find out at the end of the movie, Nick Nolte's buddy is not actually who he says he is, who's played wonderfully by Saul Rubinek, who I've always enjoyed as an actor, from True Romance and Unforgiven and Death Wish 5 and a bunch of other movies. Um, you find out that he's the bad guy, he's behind it all, they close the case, they figure it out, They, of course, through the course of the movie, they fall in love, they get married, happily ever after. But like I said, the movie kind of goes in different directions. It has a little bit of the comedy. It has a little bit of romance. It has the thriller aspects. There's a little bit of drama in there. There is a little bit of action, which I thought was cool, particularly at the end of the film. So there's a bunch of things going on in this movie at once, which I like because it, it changed it up and mixed it up. Like I said earlier, you know, Julia Roberts had just done The Pelican Brief, which was a thriller. Nick Nolte had done plenty of action films and thriller movies, you know, 48 Hours, 1 and 2, and, and Extreme Prejudice, amongst, amongst others. Excuse me. So, you know, this movie kind of put everything in the blender, which I do like. I like that it did that. I thought it was interesting. It was a good way to do it. There's a pretty damn impressive supporting cast in this film. I will say that. Like I said, you have Saul Rubinek, who I've always enjoyed. He's, spoiler alert, he's the bad guy. But it was cool to see him. James Rebhorn is one of the assassins. May he rest in peace. I always enjoyed his work from, I mean, God, he was in so many movies. Uh, My Cousin Vinny, Blank Check, Meet the Parents, um, so many different movies, you know, great actor, and he is missed. I always enjoyed his work. Uh, you have Nestor Serrano, who's been in a bunch of stuff. I think he was one of the cops in, uh, Bad Boys, in the first Bad Boys. I think he was one of the, the Spanish cops. Um, Keith Gordon from Back to School and Jaws 2 and Christine has a cameo, basically. He plays one of the, the video camera guys for the news crews. And apparently, the reason why he took this movie was to give Nick Nolte the script for, I think it's Mother Night, which was an HBO film that I think Nick Nolte did right after this, where he played a Nazi. And that movie did very well. It was critically acclaimed. It was, you know, one of Nick Nolte's best roles and everything. So Keith Gordon actually slipped him the script for that, which I thought was pretty cool. Um... Kelly Rutherford has a part. She was in a bunch of different stuff. Um, Charles Martin Smith plays Julia Roberts' boss. Uh, Robert Loggia from Over the Top and Sopranos and Scarface plays Nick Nolte's boss. Unfortunately, he's only in one scene. But So there is a pretty damn impressive supporting cast in this movie. I couldn't believe how many people were in this. Recognizable people. Uh Bunch of bunch of big names. And it was written and directed by, at the time they were married, but they, they wrote it and then the, the guy directed it. He's the guy that wrote Smokey and the Bandit. His wife ended up directing later uh, Parent Trap, which I like, What Women Want, a bunch of different movies. So that's pretty cool too. They, they Again, they're no longer married, but at the time they were when they were doing this. And I think that the movie's well done. I think it's well directed. Like I said, a lot of very impressive actors, whether it's the main people or the supporting cast. I think that Julia Roberts and Nick Nolte had good chemistry despite not liking each other. That, like I said, there are parts of the film where that is evident. There are parts of the movie where that is clear, but I think it it worked. I think it made the movie better. That's just my opinion. That's just how I look at it. I think it's very well shot. Um, 
I do think it's a little long in the tooth because without credits, it's like an hour and 58 minutes. They definitely could have trimmed it. They definitely could have tightened it up. They definitely could have, you know, condensed things because a lot of, like, especially when they get into the muck of the investigation, a lot of it's just repetitive. A lot of it kind of slows down. You know, we've got to go here and talk to this guy. Then we got to go there. Oh, someone's trying to kill us. Oh, and then we have to go here. And then we have to go there. So a lot of that could have been tightened up a little bit, at least in my opinion. Um, like I said, there is, a, you know, there's a little bit of action. There's, you know, them getting shot at and, and uh, you know, trying to get hitman in a car trying to run them over and stuff the ending they're at this facility where they're experimenting and there's like this glass like the lights and there's like a glass not a ceiling but it's like you know whatever a glass floor whatever that is falls to the ground and smashes everywhere it's all practical you know catwalks are falling and people are sliding off and grabbing on and and it's all done for real it's all practical effects and i was like holy fuck remember when they used to do this in movies do you, i know you guys remember but i'm like oh okay like it's all practical and this was what 90 i think this was 94 i should have looked yeah 1994 so this was the same year i mean if we're talking action you know, straight up action movies. The Crow came out that year. True Lies came out that year. The Shadow, Clear and Present Danger. Time Cop, On Deadly Ground. The Specialist. I mean, there was a bunch. And again, again, this is not a a straight up action movie, but you know, a lot of good action movies came out in '94. You know, some of my favorites actually: The Crow, Time Cop. Uh, True Lies, obviously, but... And, you know, all those movies have a lot of practical. Some of them have some CG in it, but most of it's all practical. But it's like, holy fuck, remember when they did that? Now, if they made this today, everything would be CG. The scaffold would be CG. Everything else would be CG. The the glass moving back and forth would be CG, and it would look terrible. But they don't make they don't make movies like this anymore, especially this way. But yeah, I mean the the action is good. The action's well done. Like I said, it's practical. I like the thriller aspect of of them becoming targets and them trying to crack this case open, crack this story open. I like some of the drama elements, the the romantic comedy of them back and forth. I, again. Despite the fact that they did not get along, it worked because you're they're supposed to fight and argue, and then fall in love. And I know I was reading that as the as the movie went on, it got worse and worse and worse. So that's why a lot of the scenes they're not in the same shot, they're not in the same frame together because they just they couldn't do it. So. A lot of the crew members joke that most of the movie is them in a double and not them together. But yeah, as you could tell what stuff was shot later because they're never in the same shot or they're very briefly in the same shot. So I guess those, they just, just, they just had to pull it together for that one shot or whatever. But I mean, me, I would love, love to have been a fly on the wall to see what all the fuss was about. Cause you hear all these stories and you're just like, what a bunch of fucking children. You know, like the Jackal, Richard Gere and Bruce Willis apparently were never allowed to be near each other for whatever reasons. And when they they were, because there were times when they were together, they would ask, so what kind of movie are you making? How's the movie you're making going? Because I don't, again, I like that film. It's not perfect, but... You know, it, it is funny that I don't think that there's any shot in the film where they're in the same frame. Now, the shot at the end, when Bruce Willis' character is dead, I think that's a double. I don't think that's Bruce Willis. So there you go. But it's just so funny to me, you know, when you hear all these stories about actors and not getting along and... Most of it is stupid. Most of it is childish. Most of it is because they are overgrown fucking children. 
Oh, he made more money than me. Oh, he his makeup is better. Oh, his lighting is better. It's like, grow up. Shut up. Shut up and grow up. But I mean, other... Well, other than the, the run time... Yeah, the only thing I really had an issue with was the run time. It, it was a little too long. But other than that, I actually quite enjoyed this film. It is on DVD. I don't think it's on Blu-ray because it's it's Disney. Disney owns it because it's Touchstone. Let me do a little quick search here. No, there is no Blu-ray for this. Now, I'm sure if you poke around... Yeah, there's a... I'm looking at it now. There's a bootleg from Poland, if, if you're interested in that. But I'm sure if you... Yeah, if you, if you poke around a little bit, I'm sure you can find a bootleg or whatever, or an HD print. But yeah, because it's it's Disney, it's Touchstone, you know, they're notorious for not releasing, hey, not releasing their catalog titles. Yeah, like a lot of the movies that are on this shirt, a lot of these Disney Channel movies are not on Blu-ray or DVD. Oh, and also, uh, Rod Daniel, who directed the previous movie that I reviewed, uh, also directed... There we go. Alley Cat Strike. I forgot to mention that. But, oh well. But hopefully one day this will get a Blu-ray. Probably not. But, like I said, if you look around, if you search hard enough, I'm sure you can find a bootleg. Like I said, if you want one from Poland, they'll get it for you. <laughs> but we'll see. But yeah, I did like this movie. This was a nice little surprise. As was the previous movie that Jesse had me review. Like Father, Like Son. But anyway... I hope that you guys enjoyed my review of I Love Trouble. Uh, next up, we got plenty of more stuff to get to. We got a bunch more paid requests, and we'll keep it rolling like we always do. So until then, as always, once again, thank you for watching. Take care. We'll talk to you guys real soon. See you!